All right, this is Cognition and Intelligence, Section D Lecture. Our prioritized standards are 8B and 8D. And objectively, now we're going to analyze the processes involved in problem solving. Intelligence is the ability to learn from one's experiences, acquire knowledge, and use resources effectively in adapting to new solutions or solving problems. Yet, there have been several different psychological theories about intelligence. British psychologist Charles Spearman developed a two-factor theory of intelligence. Uh, one factor that he called the G-factor, of the, which was of general intelligence, and the S-factor of specific intellectual abilities. So the G-factor includes the abilities to acquire knowledge, to reason abstractly, to adopt to novel situations, and to benefit from instruction and experience. So people with higher general intelligence learn faster based on his theory. Uh, the level of general intelligence a person has can generally be measured, um, like would be through a general intelligence test, like an IQ test, which we'll talk about briefly. Now, the S factor, this relates to the ability to excel in certain areas, yet not necessarily across all areas. So, for instance, when you take the ACT, there are four subject level tests. Uh, subject area test, and potentially you could do well on parts, but not necessarily the entire test. So uh, certain, again, subject areas you might potentially do better on than others. Now, British psychologist Raymond Cattell proposed a theory that general intelligence was actually divided into two components crystallized and fluid intelligence. So with crystallized intelligence, this was characterized as acquired knowledge and the ability to, retri to retrieve rather information. So when you learn, remember, and recall information, you are using your crystallized intelligence. But with fluid intelligence, this encompasses the ability to see complex relationships and solve problems. So if your normal root home was blocked uh, due to construction or possibly an auto accident, then your fluid intelligence would determine your ability to navigate an alternate route home. Now, American psychologist Robert Sternberg developed the triarchic theory of intelligence that believed intelligence was comprised of three parts, practical, creative, and analytical intelligence. So practical intelligence, this is finding solutions to problems in one's everyday life by applying knowledge based on your experiences. Sometimes people refer to this as having street smarts. As where creative intelligence is marked by inventing or imagining a solution to a problem or a situation. And with analytical intelligence, this is closely aligned with academic problem solving and the ability to analyze, evaluate, judge, compare, and contrast. So potentially you can have uh, one, two, possibly all of these. You could do better at one than others. American psychologist Howard Gardner developed the multiple intelligences theory that is characterized by at least eight intelligences where people often excel in some and falter in others. So these intelligences included linguistic intelligence, which is the ability to use language. You're going to see that often with the writers, journalists, and teachers. Uh, logical or mathematical intelligence is another, which is the ability to think logically and to solve mathematical problems. So this would be like scientists, engineers, and mathematicians. Musical intelligence is the ability to compose and or perform music. So this would be like musicians, even those that are unable to actually read musical notes. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence is the ability to control one's body motions, so this would be like athletes, dancers, even possibly athletic coaches. Spatial intelligence is the ability to understand how objects are orientated in space, so this would be like pilots, astronauts, architects, navigators. Uh, naturalist intelligence, this is the ability to recognize the patterns found in nature, so like farmers, biologists, ecologists, landscapers. Interpersonal intelligence is the ability to understand and be sensitive to the emotional states of others, so like counselors, social workers, salespersons. 
Intrapersonal intelligence, this refers to the ability to access personal feelings and motivations, so various people oriented careers would see this. Gardeners, inter and intrapersonal intelligences are often combined to describe emotional intelligence, which is the ability to understand the emotions of yourself and others, show empathy, understand social relationships and cues, and regulate emotions of oneself and respond in culturally appropriate ways. The common means of measuring intelligence is done through the intelligence quotient, or IQ for short, which is a number representing a, representing a measure of intelligence. There are actually a variety of IQ tests, yet the most commonly used are going to be the Stanford Binet intelligence scales. Now, IQ results from the division of one's mental age by one's chronological age, and then multiplying that quotient by 100. So an IQ score of 100 actually denotes that the mental age is the same as the chronological age, as where an IQ of less than 100 denotes an intelligence level lower than expected for someone that age, while one more than 100 denotes an intelligence level higher than expected for someone that age. IQ enables the comparison of intelligence levels of people from different age groups. IQ tests are generally valid for predicting academic success and job performance. Now, for an IQ test to be useful and uh, measure intelligence well, it must have both reliability and validity. So it is actually possible for a test to be reliable, but still be invalid or potentially be valid, yet not be reliable. So by reliability, this is the tendency of a test to produce the same scores again and again each time it's given to the same people. As where validity is the degree to which a test actually measures what it is supposed to measure. Now there is an assumption that IQ is normally distrib distributed around a mean of 100 with a standard deviation of about 15 which means that people with IQ scores between 85 and 115 are considered of average intelligence. So a person with an IQ score, two standard deviations above the mean is actually considered to have intellectual giftedness. So about 2% of the population is considered to be gifted, possessing an IQ of 130 or higher. While some studies have demonstrated that gifted children generally grow up to be successful adults, Having intellectual giftedness does not guarantee success. So a person with an IQ score two standard deviations below the mean are considered to have an intellectual disability, sometimes referred to as intellectual developmental disorder. Uh, formally, this was referred to as mental retardation or developmentally delayed. So intellectually disabled people with scores, IQ scores of 70 or lower exhibit deficits in mental ability and adaptive behavior. Again, this is roughly about 2% of the population. So causes of intellectual disability can include deprived environments, as well as chromosome and genetic disorders, alcohol, dietary deficiencies, and toxins in their environment. Intellectual ability can vary or the inability, rather, can vary from mild to profound. Now, in the study of intelligence, there has been much debate as to what extent heredity and environment impact intelligence. Much of the research of the role of genetics and intelligences, intelligence has been conducted through various twin studies. The Minnesota study of twins reared apart found that identical twins, both raised together and raised apart, exhibit a higher correlation between their IQ scores than siblings or fraternal twins that are raised together. So such findings point to the significance of genetics and intelligence, especially since identical twins raised in separate households have more in common intellectually than even fraternal twins that are raised in the same household. So the range of reaction theory actually suggests that our genes set the boundaries within which we can operate yet our environment interacts with the genes to determine where in that range our intellectual abilities will actually fall. So according to the theory, a person's genetic potential is a fixed quantity, but reaching the full potential actually depends on the environmental stimulation experienced, usually in their childhood. 
so therefore one of only average intellectual potential raised in an extremely stimulating environment may prove to reach a higher level of intelligence than someone else with a much higher level of intellectual potential raised in a much less stimulating environment. So some studies suggest that the daily stress that's associated with living in poverty, as for instance, may negatively affect how the brain functions and develops, thus leading to reduced IQ scores. All right, that concluded the Cognition and Intelligence Section D lecture. Our prioritized standards again were 8, B, and D, and objectively, now you can analyze the processes involved in problem solving.